So before starting to paint, I decided to put some of these cross uh, braces in where the hat channels are. These will help support the, support the wider span so that it doesn't bounce or bow over time. Uh, so I'll have something to screw into that's a little more rigid. So we've got them going all the way from the back down the center. I don't think it's necessary on the, on the more narrow pieces at 18 or 12 inches. So just the 36 inch, 36 inch span. So I've got some old clumpy pink paint that I'm using for the uh, for the back side. It'll go up up toward the insulation just to cover this for a moisture barrier. Um, so that's the idea anyway. So I've got the uh, back coating on these five boards for the middle of the bus. I had to switch to some white PVA primer that I had. I ran out of the pink paint. I thought I had most of a gallon of that old paint, but uh, there's big clumps in the middle. So uh, Anyhow, uh, the back's primed on these. Now I'm going to move to these smaller pieces. I should be able to get primer on all of them before quitting. So I've got a uh, coat of paint or, and or primer on the back of these all. Got them stacked up to dry here. I was able to just lean these up against each other for this coat. I'll have to be more careful with the finished side that's going to be visible. All right, so Maddie came over tonight to help me put the first piece of the ceiling panels in place. I decided since I needed to fill the screw holes anyway, I would just paint them on the ceiling with a long handled roller. So this first panel's in place. You can see I took measurements to get this first one lined up and uh, initially I made some wrong markings there but you'll see I have written here where the LED uh, holes are going to be for the lighting. The skylight of course is going there and then we got one in the center here then one more at the foot of the bed here and uh, so this piece is in place you'll notice I put the screws in where I have the cross cross supports to take the bounce out of this uh, definitely not going anywhere um, didn't matter so much right now but I did forget my one inch screws that I bought I ended up using one and a quarter which is a little too long I was just careful not to go anywhere where the blue tubes were so anyhow I'll have to bring those from the house but uh, this first one went pretty well um, definitely a two-person job and we also use these kind of clamps here to hold the panels in place like an extra set of hands uh, to hold things snug before you put screws in. And you'll notice we struck a line with the chalk box after taking fresh measurements for 36 inches so that everything from here will be lined up with the center of the bus. And we've done that all the way down, well, almost almost to the very front. we got to snap a new line when we get down there. But this should go pretty quick getting these up. I think I'll just drill them all at once after I've laid out all the holes. And then we'll get the painting done after I put some wood putty in the screw holes. Back at the bus here with my son Jeremiah who doesn't like to be videotaped. And we're going to put these center panels up all the way down. And then I'll mark the, uh, the cut holes for them uh, for the LED lights after we've just got them put up in place. I want to get the part that requires two sets of hands for the center. Um, I'm going to get that done first. So that's what we're going to do. So Jeremiah and I have quickly thrown up about uh, three more sheets of plywood down the center here. So it's going well. I've been just kind of generally marking where I need to drill uh, as we go. I'll take more detailed center line measurements and, and uh, get the actual holes drilled later because uh, I just wanted to take advantage of having a second person available to put these up in the air and hold, hold them in the right places. So uh, right now we're going to cut two pieces or cut one piece into two sections to go on this part here. I'm going to take a couple measurements. There's a little bit of a bend there. So uh, we'll, we'll mark that out and we'll get that cut. Okay, so with my son's help, we got most of the ceiling panels in place. The gaps were a little bit wider than I was hoping for, but it's nothing that uh, 
10 pounds of wood putty and some trim can't fix. So, anyhow, I'm being facetious, it's not that bad. So, what I'll do at this point is drill the holes for the lights. I marked them as I went, kind of just the rough reminders of where they go. And I marked, like you can see right here, I marked where the hat channels are so I can do diagonals um, to find centers. And then I kind of marked rough X's where, you know, the lighting needs to go. But I'll, I'll refine the spot from these diagonal marks uh, with a straight edge and then drill the holes carefully. Um, so anyway, uh, it turned out pretty well. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the progress. It went up quickly. Now it's time for ice cream. So it's the next morning after my son and I, uh, or actually it's afternoon, after my son and I worked on the ceiling yesterday. I'm going to cut panels to go in this section here. And I will also be drilling the holes for LED lights in the rough area of the X's that I marked before. Although I will be measuring them more carefully uh, based on the hat channel locations so uh, anyhow uh, that's what I'm about or up to today what I'm doing right now is uh, I've got one of these LED lights and uh, I'm going to test fit with this circular saw or this hole saw the hole saw is slightly larger than I'd like it to be I'm gonna drill a hole here and see if uh, it's acceptable um, it's just a little bit bigger than I'd prefer uh, but if it works, it works. I'd rather not have to go buy a new hole saw. So we'll give it a go. All right, so I've got the hole drilled. Now I'm going to test fit it for slop. This might be a little awkward holding the camera at the same time. But you're used to that if you watch my videos. So anyhow, I'll uh, try to test fit it. And what I figured out here is that there's a little slop, but the uh, the overall situation's decent as long as the springs hold out so um, looking at it from the back end there's a little bit of a gap there but uh, I think it'll work so I just uh, used the hole saw and I cut the first two holes here for the reading lights in the bedroom area and then in here the will be a skylight we can crawl out of onto our catamaran net so uh, then the next hole I'll probably drill is in the center here and then there'll be three one two three down at the foot of the bed so anyhow I'm gonna keep going so there's two more holes the wires are popping right out like I anticipated or at least I was hopeful they would do that and now I've got one more here and one more over here to do. Just like that the bedroom section is done and it was pretty quick and easy to do once I built a little bit of a, a template here with markings on this piece of wood to make it a little faster to find centers. So here's a little uh, trick to get the plug out of the hole saw. I just drill a little bit of a tip of a screw into it and then I pull it out much easier than fighting it through the slits on the side okay so right here is the first hole that I've drilled where I've figured out I'm gonna have to fish for the wire <clears throat> I don't think I can get the camera up in there <clears throat> I do have a scope for this so I should be able to figure out where the wire is but I don't have it with me it'll be later so Anyhow, that'll happen, I'm guessing, from time to time when the wire slipped away from the hole. Making good progress here. Most of them I've found the wires. A few of them I've got a fish, and over there I cut a tube by accident, so I'll have to join two halves of a tube together. So I've drilled all the lighting holes in the ceiling I can do so far. Um, I've got, I believe, three more to do when I do this uh, front section over here. Um, when I get these pieces put in, I'll have three more to do. My current task is get, to get those uh, clearance lights soldered. And then I'm going to put these uh, pieces that I cut and already drilled the LED holes for screwed into place up front there. Uh, the very last pieces here in the corners, 
I'm going to leave those alone until I finally weld the side panels and fill that with insulation and so on. But uh, the ceiling's getting pretty close to done here. So at this point, I feel a little bit like Michelangelo minus the uh, artistic talent on my back here. I'm trying to do this in the uh, overcab bunk. I've got the three lights cut into these pieces and then mounted. These side panels will be a different story. I'm going to fix the skin. Uh, this one will be more of a cabinet, um, but uh, it'll get some wood in the back of the cabinet. And then around this other side here, also I've got to make repairs, and that'll have a slanted piece like this one um, mounted after I make those repairs and fill it with the insulation and so on. Um, I did get up in here for the clearance lights, and I soldered. You won't be able to see them. They're all bundled up behind this piece of metal, but I got the, the lights uh, the connection soldered and wrapped. That would have been a much better thing to do before I put the insulation in and had some working room. That was not much fun. But at this point, the uh, ceiling is finished as far as getting the wood put in place. Getting down off the ladder here. So, uh, looking all the way around here, we've got uh, all the panels up. The wires are put through, except for the ones that I couldn't grab. In preparation for the temporary lighting, uh, temporary wiring of the LEDs, I've got this DC power supply. This is, I believe, a 10 amp supply. Converts 110 to DC. Uh, mounted it on this makeshift shelf here. This is just a temporary thing to keep it out of the way. Uh, I'm going to be wiring a 12 volt bus that will be part of the permanent solution. Uh, you know, 12 volt line running front to back. Uh, it will be on a fuse, uh, so I'm also going to mount my fuse panel temporarily right here. Um, but this is going to be uh, how I, you know, how I support the uh, the power supply, so I don't break it or, you know, get it uh, get it knocked over or whatever. So, anyhow, I'm going to get back at it tomorrow. Back at the bus. Today's business is to paint, but first I'm going to fix the issues up here. I just decided I'm going to unscrew the ends of those panels sufficient for me to figure out the problem, get the wires where they need to be. Uh, so I'm just going to loosen the screws and hopefully I don't have to fully remove the panels to do what I need to do. Uh, and then I'll get the wires repaired and through the holes. Then I'm going to paint starting with a coat of PVA primer and then just some flat white paint. So that's what I'm up to. So on this one I was able to unscrew that uh, end right there and I think I can avoid unscrewing this middle panel. I was able to get one of the wires through. Uh, now I'm going to repair the wire that runs over to one of these lights. I think that middle one there that uh, was cut through. You see my hole saw caught this and actually cut right through it, frayed up these wires. That's just paint on my thumb there. Frayed up these wires, uh, ripped them apart and separated the two pieces here. So. Uh, there's the conduit that got cut. So, Anyhow, uh, what I'm going to do is just fish the wire through, pulling a new one through, uh, then pulling it through from over there, and then I'll tape the conduit together, um, these two pieces, so that the, you know, I'll just use some duct tape to, to join the two. So, Anyhow, that should work. Hopefully I don't have to ever replace that wire. It might be a little more challenging with the uh, roughness inside, but I'll take my chances. So, Anyhow. Alright, so all I had to do here is uh, just I'm taping the two wire ends together with a little bit of duct tape, rolling it over, and then I'll use the, uh, the wire there to pull it through. So I already did that from here up, and uh, so I'm actually proving the concept of replacing wires here, um, even ahead of when I thought I'd have to do it. Okay, so I was able to get that wire all the way through both pieces, and just wrap a little duct tape around it to keep the tubes uh, joined together. So that ought to do it. So now all is made whole here. I've got the uh, wires pulled through on these. And now I'm going to go to that one and figure out what's going on over there. I know I have a wire up in there. I just can't locate it. And the last wire is fished through. It was just a little to the side. A little past hand reach. So, um... 
all ready now to patch the screw heads that will be visible. Uh, these ones here won't get patched because they'll be behind the trim, um, but they will get painted, but they won't fill the heads with wood filler. Um, however, these will, the ones that will be visible when the trim is all finished, um, I'll try to make them look nicer with some wood fill first before I paint. So that's what I'm going to get doing now. Also, little cracks like that, I may use some white caulk or paint, or I'm sorry, white, white caulk or wood fill to minimize the appearance of the crack. Um, at least in places where I know that the seams might be visible when the bus is finished. So since this perforated metal was kind of in the way, I went ahead and put it up under the bunk. Where it is not is the edge of the cabinet or the roof of the cabinet which will go above the windshield so uh, that cabinet will start sort of where those black screws are going lengthwise that'll be the edge of the cabinet and uh, so uh, at least it's out of the way I think it looks pretty good actually painted white like that um, it'll be handy we'll be able to put magnetic stuff up on it uh, because it is steel so um, anyhow, I'm going to get uh, to painting the roof at this point. Um, first, I've got to find my wood fill putty and uh, get some uh, nail heads filled or screw heads filled. What I'm doing here is uh, just using some wood wood fill putty to patch these uh, screw holes just where the trim's not po potentially not going to cover it. Um, not doing them all. So. It's hard to film and do this at the same time, but there, that should uh, that should be hidden when I paint. Yep. So, and then I'm working working my way toward the front here. All right, so I've got the uh, wood fill done all the way down. Uh, now it's time to start priming. Got the roller on a pole here. Got my tray ready. I'm gonna open the primer and get going here. I'm not going to bore you with footage of painting. I'll just show you the final product. So my earlier crack about Michelangelo here laying on my back to do stuff in this bunk area. I guess I actually was painting on my back like Michelangelo. So, uh, primer's done. Um, get a quick shot of that. And uh, now I'm going to put the ceiling paint on. Also white. So, it's a little after 10 at night got a coat of primer put on and one coat of the ceiling paint it's a flat white paint and my arms and neck are done so that's it for the evening and I think I'll probably end up putting one more coat of paint on I'm just gonna do a quick run around here for any little beads of paint that I need to smooth out like I don't know if you could see that right there there's a little streak of paint I need to hit, hit it with a roller real quick but I am finished at this point so I feel very gratified we got the ceiling panels up wires punched through and at least one good coat of paint on <laughs>